All right, and now the final bit of group theory that we need to understand in order to properly understand the, the theory behind steerable group convolutions is a notion of induced representations and uh, feature fields. So let's go over that in uh, this video. Okay, so let me start off with a somewhat dry definition of a feature field. And we talk about feature fields when we talk about uh, objects like vector fields that transform under the action of a group that can be uh, decomposed into the translation group and the subgroup H group, right? So the type of affine groups that we've uh, seen before. So now a feature field really is a vector field that has its as a domain, the D-dimensional uh, Euclidean domain. So this can be identified with the translation uh, group. And uh, every element in its domain is mapped to a vector that lives in a D-dimensional, D-row dimensional uh, vector space. And now when we talk about group transformation, we need to know how its domain and its codomain transforms. Well, the codomain of these vector fields, they transform in a predictable way via the representations of the subgroup H. Right? So vectors in uh, this uh, vector field, they transform via row H, the representation of H on this uh, vector space. And the domain, the domain transforms via the inverse group actions, as we have seen before. So let's say by the regular representation of the group on, on these kind of functions. Now, these ingredients together, so that its domain transforms via the inverse group action and its codomain via the representation row H, together uh, define what we call an induced representation. So the induced representation, which is induced from both row and the group structure of G acting on these feature fields is given by a transformation of the domain followed by a transformation of uh, the codomain. And we've seen these kind of things before. It's kind of intuitive, right? If I have just a, a scalar field, so let's say a field of gray values, and if I rotate such a field of scalar values, then I really only need to transform its domain because the pixels or these gray values don't have any orientation oriented information in them. So it's really the application of, well, the transformation of the domain. So G inverse applied to the domain. And on the codomain, we just multiply it with one. So this is the trivial uh, representation. And intuitively, then I can have a vector field. So this vector field, uh, these green arrows could, for example, represent the direction of wind. If you look at a map or um, some force field or a velocity field, and obviously, if this field as a whole rotates, then these vectors need to rotate accordingly, right? So if I want to transform a vector field, I need to transform its domain via the action of G, and I need to also transform its codomain via the action of, um, well, H, which could be the rotation group on these, these vectors. So when we talk about rototranslations, so translations and rotations, then the rototranslation part applies only to the domain. So I translate and rotate this object, for example, to this location. Uh, but these vectors, yeah, these vectors I'm not translating, they're, they're attached to these points, but the direction of these vectors, these vectors, they rotate. And so the, the part that transforms these vectors only comes from the rotation part, the subgroup H uh, part. And now the thing is, um, we should think of this vector field as more general than the, just assigning, let's say, 2D vectors to each locations which are transformed by a 2D 2x2 two two rotation matrices. But these vectors could represent any quantity, any vector that transforms under a representation of uh, the group H. So the vector field in a way is defined uh, defined via the, the representation of H and we call therefore we call this row the type of the field. Okay so in summary we have feature fields which are vector fields in which the vectors transform under a representation row of a subgroup H. And this uh, row is called the type. And then if we know the type and, and well, the, the overall group structure, then this induces a so-called induced representation. So we have row, which induces a representation on the entire vector field F hat as follows. So via transformation of the domain followed by a transformation of the codomain uh, obtained by the representation row. And now we have seen such uh, feature fields before. Um, well, first of all, we have the regular G feature map. So now we're not talking about feature fields yet, uh, but I'm going to make an analogy here. So uh, we have this regular G feature maps, which assign for every possible element X, H, a feature value. And so 
we can actually think of these regular feature maps as uh, feature fields that assign for every uh, position x a function uh, on the group H. So for every position x, so I'm going to denote this with superscript H. So for every uh, point in space, I have this fiber, which represents the orientation response at that uh, location, right? So I have this whole field of directional responses, which are the columns uh, in this um, G uh, feature maps. Okay, so this really is a, is a change of notation. So in this case, I say, okay, if my domain expanded, but I could also say, okay, let's just fix uh, position X and keep the, the rotation uh, angle uh, variable that creates a function over subgroup H at each point X. And I can represent it as follows. So I really have a feature field here because I know that these fibers, these signals, they represent via the regular representation of H, right? So for a fixed position, I have this shift of my uh, function on uh, the rotation part. So I know how these fibers transform and that induces a representation on these feature fields, um, which I denote uh, as follows. So this is a representation on the fibers and it induces a representation, which is all in all, this uh, representa induced representation acting on these fiber fields is the same as the regular representation acting on these G feature maps. And I think this nicely illustrates this induced representation type, right? This the induced representation transformed the domain, so that's the planar rotation aspect of things, but it also transformed the codomain, and that's this periodic shift that we saw before in lecture one, um, the shift twist of functions on SE2. So we had to rotate the planar part, and since the horizont or the vertical axis corresponded to rotation, a rotation of the object also shifts everything along this uh, vertical axis. Okay, so this is a type of field which I will refer to as a regular H uh, feature field. But then we also talked about Fourier transform, right? So functions on the group H can be transformed to their Fourier coefficients, which transform under uh, the, these uh, irreducible representations, under these block diagonal representations. So we can uh, perform a change of basis, let's say, by this Fourier transform and create vector fields in which the vector elements correspond to these Fourier coefficients. So now I have a field of vectors that transform under the representation rho, so no longer under the regular representation, but under this block diagonal representation rho. So, and that induces then also in turn, well, the regular, uh, sorry, the induced representation of this uh, row representation on these uh, feature fields. Yeah, okay, so one, one, one might say that, okay, these are just regular feature maps. These can be told as uh, thought of as regular feature fields, and these are generally referred to as steerable feature fields or as Fourier coefficient fields. Okay, and so all these cases correspond to the same thing, the same kind of feature maps. It's just when we talk about steerable group convolution methods, it's often more convenient to talk about these steerable H feature fields, which, rep which transform under these block diagonal representations. Because if we have the, these fibers, uh, so it's, let's say, organized in these sub-vector spaces, which each transform via these row Ls, then we, it makes the analysis actually much uh, simpler. Okay, so that's all you need to know for now. When we talk about steerable group convolutional neural networks, these neural networks, they map between feature fields. And these feature fields uh, are like fields of vectors that encode for directional uh, pieces of information. These vectors that transform under some representation of H. And we will look into that in more detail in uh, the upcoming videos.